And of course, the greatest thing that is overlooked today, amongst other things, is the fact that eternal salvation cannot come in time. <laughs> can't. What is in time and comes in time is time. Eternal salvation is revealed in time. Equally as Christ was revealed in time. Okay, because they follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth in the Old Testament. Christ was there present, but it wasn't revealed. But now we see Christ. Because Christ has been revealed, he has come in the fullness of time. He himself has come in the fullness. And in the fullness of time is the fullness of the law and of the prophets. He did not come. Reveal himself as a physical, living person to do away with the law and the prophets, what he came to fulfill. No, says Arminianism. No, says Millennialism. He didn't. Well, you can contend against Christ all you like. We Christians are going to sit there and sit in justification, no animosity towards Christ as you have. Because we are the children of God. Carry on. See where we get you. See where we get you. Hmm? Where's he going to get you? To have animosity. And then deny you have animosity towards Jesus Christ. It's animosity to say that he didn't fulfil the law and the prophets. He had to fulfil the law and the prophets. On behalf of his children. And so he did. And it was finished. What was finished? Hmm? The sealing up of the salvation of the children of the Lord. Sealing up. Not bringing in salvation, the sealing up of salvation. And by all this, we should look upon persons, even as James says here, as our equals. Respecting their status, but equals. And again, we come back to the beginning. If a person, if we are standing before a person who says that they're this, that and the other, they must justify themselves. Man comes in. T company says, oh, I'm an engineer. You've got a problem with this, this. Yeah, there you go. Now, we respect him as an engineer. That's common courtesy. And he makes a mess. We don't have him back. He's dishonoured himself. He's not what he professes to be. We've given him the opportunity. He's no more respected by us than a pound of lettuce. Okay? So he goes to one side. If you're before a judge and they're utterly corrupt, we don't respect them. Because they're telling us, don't respect us because we're utterly corrupt. Okay? I affirm you are utterly corrupt. Okay? Where's a good judge? We say, thank you, judge. That's good, honourable. And we respect them, okay? But they're still not above us. It's only their position in life that they have. Our position is above their position, is equal to their position, if you like. Because they, we're skilled in what we do, they're skilled in what they do. There is a balance. Without us, without them, Society cannot work. <sighs> Scripture continues to teach us this. The head cannot say of, of the arms, 
I have no need of you. Look at it this way. Look at it this way. Okay. The old, old days we used to have clocks with mechanisms in. All wheels and air springs. Now the greatest cog in a clock, a nice fancy clock if you like, cannot move, cannot benefit anything unless the rest of the cogs are in line with it, working with it. Every cog must be in its place. If not, the whole workings of the clock come to nothing. It doesn't work. Society is the same. If it's out of kilter, it doesn't work. You see, the, the greatest part, the greatest cog cannot perform without the smallest, even the air spring. Take away the air spring, the whole lot doesn't work. Everybody has a place in society which God has placed them in. The road sweeper, the street sweeper, they do their part for society and should be respected, highly respected. Respect to one another for the work that we do, no matter if this world says it's menial work, it's not menial work, it's important work. There's no such thing as menial work. It's all important. It's very, very important. We cannot work as a society if we're applauding people and despising the poor. Can you imagine for one moment uh, you're going along the road or, or you are or attempting to go along the road but you can't. Because the road is blocked by rubbish Rubble, everything. Because there's no so-called lower class to keep the roads clear. You can't walk up, down the pavement without breaking your neck. All the rubble, broken bottles, all the rubbish piled up, blowing everywhere into your face and the rest of it because you haven't got what, the, again, the world says is poor to clear this away. Never, never despise anybody. God has created them and created them for a purpose and for a task, indeed, and given them a talent. The man and the woman who sweeps the street, it is their talent to do so. They cannot be great engineers unless God has caused them some stage in life to be so. Everybody has a place in society. <laughs> Sadly, even the criminals and even the ill. The ill for the compassion and bringing out and drawing out of humanity. And of course as the result of sin entering the world. Never despise the poor. It's against the law of God. Love thy neighbour as thyself. And that does not, does not, say you love evil people. Okay, it doesn't include evil people. God loves the righteous and he hates the wicked. And he is an example of his own law. So if you want to know what the example of the law of God is, look at your maker. Look at our maker.
The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness and ungodliness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. This is how it is. We love the good people, so-called good people. We hate the bad. And we try to encourage others not to be wicked. We pull them up. And others, of course, we leave alone. Swine, as they are. Because they're reprobated. They're reprobated of God. And there's no point in them. There's no point in contending with them. So, at the end of the day, let us have respect where respect is due. Let us not have idolatry as pseudo-Protestantism does and Arminianism does and all the lot of it is going towards the Antichrist Romanism. It's reflecting Romanism, the Antichrist. Let us not go that way. Let us not go that way. The godless blaspheme God What are we doing? Praising, shaking their hands and oh, you know, you're the finest in the world and all this business. And then they get into the pulpits, many of these people. And they fleece nominal Christianity. Oh, uh, fleece them. And God is supposed to be with them and he is a great soul winner, he is a great healer. And he's a great this, and he's a great that, and he's a great the other. And like Romanism, the pseudo-Protestants bow down and worship and contend and fight for them, for the mullahs of this world, the Spurgeons of this world, the Wigglesworths of this world. Oh, Wigglesworth, oh. It is awful. Do you know something with Wigglesworth? All these fancy stories that were written up. Poetic license, all right? The raising up of the dead. He couldn't raise his wife. <laughs> the first person, if you could raise the dead, if you were God Almighty, or given of God Almighty, at a point to raise the dead, you'd raise your wife, wouldn't you? So why didn't God give this fella to raise his wife up? It's blaspheming God again, isn't it? It's deriding God. Why raise up this woman over here and this fella over here, not your wife? It's mocking God have to be so careful and <laughs> really truly you have to be so very 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 careful have to be very careful because this world mocks God derides God mocks God And he does it in so many subtle ways. So many subtle ways. Let us not have faith as to respect of persons. Hmm? The only person we should worship and glorify, honour and adore is our Maker. That's it. That should be our central idol, the only idol, to idolise God is the central part of our religion. Let the world have its titular gods, we have one true God, even Jesus Christ, we worship 
and to idolize Christ, our maker and creator, life giver and sustainer of all things, and the one who takes away life and gives life, the one who rules over all and is blessed forever. Amen.